good news, we can cure cancer in mice. Bad news, that doesn't often translate to humans. Good news, we can introduce several mental conditions in mice. Bad news, we need a bridge that brings the mouse brain much closer to humans. Enter Guopeng Feng, who's fearlessly creating models of monkeys that will give us profound insights into the nature of autism, schizophrenia, other brains larger than those currently residing in Washington, D.C. Guopeng is MIT's James and Patricia Porteous Professor of Neuroscience. Thank you, uh, the, uh, the organizing committee, to invite me. Um, I'm sorry I have to use the slides to bring you back to reality from the romantic talk and the exciting uh, talk on the, both the love and, uh, and the, the, um, the robotic uh, arms. So in the um, mental, health, uh, mental health, mental illness is the biggest pro problem of the society, actually, uh, according to WHO. So in the United States alone, each year, in, this is from uh, National Institute, Institute of Mental Health. We, about, we have about 40 to 60 million people suffering from mental illness. And of these, 12 million of them each year uh, are very serious and need medical help. The problem is we don't have much to help them. So uh, this is a slide I often use. Uh, in the, this is showing the Magnificent new drugs developed since 1950. In the past 60 years, basically we didn't have much at all. You can, the green bar is the, uh, is the um, uh, cardiovascular, new drugs for cardiovascular disease. The blue and the yellows are for depression and schizophrenia. You can see we really need, it's not because of the uh, lack of effort of money. Hundreds of billion dollars have been uh, spent in trying to develop uh, these uh, drugs. So that's the challenge. So why we think we can do it now? And you all here try to help, and we all here try to help. The reason we, can think, we think now it's time that we can make a difference is because of new technologies. So there are incredible number of new technologies made the neuroscience research much more exciting and possible. So one of the key things, of course, is the genomic technology. You heard a lot of them from a billion dollars when I was a graduate student, 20 years to sequence the first genome. That time I said, okay, I will let them do it. I waited for 20 years, then I will come back. And now to, we know we takes, you know, it costs less than a thousand dollars and take, in one day you can sequence many, many genomes. So this lead to the discovery of gene large scale genetic studies, the discovery of risk genes or even causative genes for many of the mental illnesses. And uh, the second, uh, uh, you, you, uh, you uh, whoops, sorry. The second technology is the genome editing. That made it possible not only, you heard from George Church that not only possible for almost everything on the planet, but also for us, for neuroscientists, uh, make uh, new uh, animal models. Unlike many other uh, field of research, we really rely on uh, animal models. For cancer scientists, it's a very tough problem, but you at least get the tissue. Every time surgeon is very happy to give to you. I'm pretty sure no one is going to uh, volunteer the brain because we need a live, whole, intact brain to study because every part of brain is very different. You just heard from uh, Helen's talk that different brain regions have different chemicals and different neural circuits. So the uh, most important thing for drug development is to understand, you heard yesterday from a uh, mid-talk, we need to understand which circuit is broken. And so we need to fix that circuit, so use whatever the way, use stimulations or use drugs. And the problem is, how do we know, uh, how do we know the target that's specifically for this circuit? So the technology we now have is, uh, one of the technology is single cell uh, analysis. So you can, we can basically, to, for any brain, we can use single cell uh, RNA-seq to look, to understand each, every gene, when and where they're expressed. So this, I'm going to use one of the examples, uh, which was studied in my lab and with the collaboration of many groups, that um, we receive inf sensory information all the time, but we can ignore them. For example, during the reception, there are hundreds of people there. You can, they're very noisy, they have loud music. You can still focus into talking to your friends or to talk to the investor. You really try to get the money to, for your, to your company. So the reason is you, can, you have a brain system called um, salamic reticular nucleus. 
Its job is to suppress everything else you don't want and enhance the things you want to hear. So that way, you can, you can imagine that it's involved in attention, right? And involve all the sensory processing, and also um, during night involves sleep. So all these things are disruptions and uh, abnormality are involved in many psychiatric disorders. So, so, so we now can sequ sequence the whole area to see is there a specific target to, to modulating different function during sleep? Uh, sleep disruption is almost in vast majority of neurodevelopment disorder kids, right? Can we um, enhance the attention? Uh, that when we need to learn, we can focus and we can do better. The answer is we can. So we did, uh, this is all in mouse. We did the uh, single cell RNA seq, dissected them out. We identified genes that are specifically expressed in this area and we uh, regulated the sub network. Now we actually have a compound can specifically regulate this process. We actually have a compound to show that if you put a human mutation into a mouse, generally the mouse, the mouse has abnormalities, and we can correct it with this compound. Now it's time to get excited, can we move into humans? The problem is, I'll, I'll give you another example. Um, in autism, uh, my lab mostly study autism. One of the genes is called Shank3, which is uh, critical for development of uh, of neuron neuron communications. And neuron neuron communication defect is one of the key pathological changes in autism spectrum disorders. So we made a mouse and models, and you can see that from the left, on your left is the Y type, on the right is the mutant. You can see the mutant mice, if you put two mutant mice together, even if they bump into each other, they ignore, right? So then their head getting closer, they separate. Right. So left, left side is the Y type. They have mouse social, they put two together, they sniff other mouse behind. That's their social interaction. Right. It's, usually it's not a hu normal human social interaction, but you can see it's a very different. It's, there is a difference. It's a very interesting beh behavior. And we can understand their circuits, which part of the brain is wrong. But how confident we are that uh, this can be translated into humans. If I tell you I have a compound, I can correct this. How many of you can want to invest $100 million to, to translate into humans? No one? Yes. OK. You're actually correct, because we already know that almost every single thing so far in psychiatry failed translating from mouse to humans. So the joke is, it's a great time to be a mouse, because we can cure autism, Alzheimer's, anything. We can have hundreds of ways to, to cure them. So the challenge is, you heard all these, right? Roche, Nevada, and the seaside. That was the post child for neurodevelopment disorder, Fragile X. It's a really sad story. Scientific research is great. It was really, really beautiful. But it did not translate. Right? Pfizer just stopped this hunting thing. There was a big hope for the hunting field. These people, uh, when the onset, only ten, have, ten, have, ten, have 10 years to live. And you probably all heard of this bioaging uh, 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 failure and uh, overnight drop of 30% of their uh, stock price. So the challenge, that's the challenge. So there are many, many possible reasons why fail. Uh, from the basic research to clinical trial. But especially for brain, uh, so you know, our livers function probably very similar between mouse and humans, but uh, brains are, at least my hope is, uh, well, a little different from the uh, mouse. So the, one of the main reasons is the prefrontal cortex. That's the reason expanded, you already heard yesterday, it's expanded most, it's a recent uh, uh, expansion in the primate and the human brain. Right, many of the re regions you actually don't see it at all. Right, so the gray area is the human, macaque monkeys, marmoset monkeys, and the rodents in the front. The many of the reasons, if the re region, these regions are involved with cognition, decision making, emotions, all other very important things. If it's not there, it's really hard to study. Right? So, so um, we and many other groups have been trying to, what else can we do uh, to make it our study more translatable. Uh, mouse are great models, extremely have, it's a revolutionary, uh, revolutionized uh, biomedical research. But for brain research, we think we need uh, better models. So the CRISPR technology you heard yesterday that made it possible to actually make any models. So we now work on two major models. One is marmoset, extremely social, and uh, lives much shorter uh, lifespan, so it's easier for uh, um, you know, later onset study. Uh, macaque monkeys are much bigger, the brain structure very much like sim uh, 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 much similar to humans, so it's, uh, uh, it's much better for, it's probably better for the uh, co uh, higher cognitive functions. So I'm gonna just show you one thing, 
that we generate Shang Tsui model. Shang Tsui is a monogenic mutation caused very severe neurodevelopment disorder uh, with autism spectrum features. And uh, there are thousands of people have uh, been identified uh, with, uh, affected by this mutation. And uh, I just want to show you the videos so of probably best. This is two Y type. They are uh, monkeys. They are separated. And you can take the separate off, divide off. And this person, take, and you can see they, were, they never saw each other before. So they were engaged, but they pay attention. They keep a distance, right? So you will see uh, the green color one is the uh, Y type. You can see they will follow each other. They, they, are, they are interested in each other. So these are juvenile, so there's no, no uh, romantic yet. And so you can see they follow each other. They're getting close with each other. Right? So just, you know, just like in a playground, you have two kids. You never saw you talk. You can see they look, they look at each other, they're engaged. Next slide is almost identical, except the green is still the same monkey. The other is a mutant with the Shang Tsui heterozygous mutation, mimic a human mutation like a human condition. You will see they are very different. So this is, uh, and next you can see, so the, first you see repetitive behavior. That's very common in autism spectrum disorders, and the repetitive uh, uh, flippling. Uh, you will see the person take the divider off, then they will start to see each other. So what you will see is this, so the green is the, uh, uh, still with the white, same white type. You can see this mutant monkey is interesting something, but I never look at, even look at this uh, white type monkey. Very, even getting close, very each other. So the, actually the white type monkey tried to get away because it doesn't understand the you know, sp personal space, the distance. So you can see this is a very much, a, a much more similar to the condition we see in human. So our hope is that with this kind of a uh, uh, mutant, we can understand that what's the circuit really similar to human brain that uh, um, uh, is disrupted that lead to this kind of uh, social uh, 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 difference or uh, uh, int not interesting social interactions. So these monkeys also have uh, serious uh, sleeping problems. They wake up a lot more during night. Um, uh, mouse sleep is very different from humans. They wake up every three to five minutes. And this is very like humans, they have, you know, they, they do sleep for 10 or 12 hours. We don't get, uh, at least in this room. So, so but uh, you can see the mutant, uh, uh, they have very just like wake up many, many more times. So our hope is like, uh, with this kind of model, we can also look at the brain structure. You heard a lot of fMRI. This is the resting state M fMRI. You can see a very big difference between the mutant and the, the, the Y type. So if we find this thing, I tell you, uh, now we have a thing that we completely can correct these things. You might be interested, you want to talk to me at least to see whether we can, but we don't have yet. So, so I'm, we're hoping that this kind of model will uh, distribute it to all over the place for neuroscientists to really understand the circuits and, and, and the goal is to find molecular targets that we can develop a treatment for, for um, uh, mental illness. Uh, I'm gonna stop here and, uh, oh, sorry. A uh, lot of people supported this work. This is actually mostly was supported, uh, was supported and still supported by philanthropical, uh, uh, our donors. Our, uh, we are very, very grateful that this allows us to do this type of work. Thank you.